Hello. In this session, we will look at how you can declare your uh, Terraform provisioners, how you can define the Terraform provisioners. So if you are certain that provisioners are the best way to uh, solve your problem, then you can go ahead and make use of your Terraform provisioners. So you can define this provisioner block inside your resource block. Okay. So whenever you are declaring the resource block within this resource block, you will be defining the provisioner block like this. Okay, so this becomes my provisioner block. Then here, this is my provisioner type. So in the last session, we discussed about the types of provisioner blocks that we have. So we have the local exec, we have the remote exec, and then we have the file provisioner. So in this case here, I'm using the local exec, which is a provisioner type. And then here is the command. What uh, is the command that I want to execute using this local exec? All right, so this is how we can declare your provisioner block within the resource block so the local exec provisioner requires no other configuration but most other provisioners must connect to the remote system using ssh or winrm so depending on the provisioner type that you are using you may need to provide additional configurations like for example let's say if you're using the file provisioner or the remote exec you'll also need to provide the connection information because Terraform needs to establish the connectivity to the remote resources. All right. So here, this is the local exec we have declared and we don't have to provide any additional configuration because we are executing this on the local machine. But depending on the provisioner you are going to define, you may need to provide some additional information. So if you are going with the remote exec or with the file provisioner, you will be having this uh, another block, which is the connection block where you'll have the connection information as to how Terraform needs to connect to the remote server. Expressions in provisioner block cannot refer to the parent resource by name. Instead, they use the special self object. So here, if you can see, I'm not, I'm not referring the resource by name, rather I'm using this special object called self object. Okay. So if you're using this provisioner block, we do not use the resource name rather we use this self object so in this case this is same as telling aws underscore instance dot web underscore instance dot private ip so because we are calling this within the same resource block we can make use of this self object meaning for the self resource and it will be able to fetch the information for us now the self object represents the provisioner's parent resource and has all the resource attributes if the same was outside this resource block then we have to use aws underscore instance dot web underscore instance dot private ip now because this is within the same resource we can make use of this self object for example use self dot private underscore ip to reference an aws underscore instance private ip attribute okay now most provisioners like i said requires access to the remote resources via ssh or WinRM and expects a nested connection block with details about how to connect to the resources. So let's say for example, using this Terraform, we have launched our instances. So we have a Linux machine and then we have a Windows machine. Now, depending on the provisioner uh, block, so maybe let's say you're using the file provisioner or you're using the remote exec. So for that, you'll also need to provide additional connection block. So the provisioner will use the ssh connection block to connect to the linux machine and if it's your windows machine it will use the winrm connection block to connect to the windows machine so we'll also need to provide this connection block as to how my terraform provisioner will connect or communicate with the remote machines so you can create one or more connection blocks that describe how to access the remote resources one use case for providing multiple connections is to have an initial provisioner connect as a root user to set up your user accounts and then have subsequent provisioners connect as a user with more limited permission. So you can define multiple connection blocks depending on your use case. So one example is, so let's say you want to first establish the connectivity with a root user and then you want to establish the connectivity with a non-root user. Then you can define multiple connection blocks for that. Now connection blocks does not take a block label and can be nested within either a resource block or a provisioner block. So you cannot, you cannot have a separate 
uh, block with the name connection it has to be part of your resource block or the provisioner block so a connection block nested directly within a resource affects all of that resources provisioner and a connection block nested in a provisioner block only affects it that provisioner and overrides any resource level connection setting so you can think of this as if you are de uh, declaring the connection block in a resource block you can think of it as your uh, global connection and if you are defining the connection block in a provisioner block it's your local connection okay so here if you see we have defined the provisioner block and this is the connection block for the provisioner and in this case i'm using the ssh so the provisioner type here is file and this is my connection type for the linux machine because i'm using ssh likewise uh, here i have another connection block which is for the windows machine so i'm using the winrm for the connectivity so this is how we define the connection block within the provisioner block in the next session we will see examples for each of these types but this is how you can define your provisioner block and your connection block that's all for this uh, session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you like the video leave a like and please share the video